Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Matthew the fourth. The Lord spoke to me a very powerful word, and I had to come on to share this with the body of Christ worldwide. And that's absolutely my intention right now. And I'm speaking this as God's prophet to the nations and from a soft voice, not screaming, not shouting, not doing backflips, not in a city center, not in an outdoor amphitheater, not in a big conference, but just right from here, from this media. It's okay. I'm speaking this to let you know the mind of God about something. Here it is. We need to preach victory especially in these times. I don't know, a lot of people are void of understanding about um, the Word of God and the power of the victory that we have. Say amen. It's good preaching here. That you, you know, a lot of people don't know what to expect. Let me tell you something. When you, if you're going to get ill or ailed in any way, healing is for you. Healing is for you. Healing is for me. And... Uh, we can understand that the more we read the Word of God, you know. It's all about the Word. I found something. <laughs> say amen. I found, I found something in the Word that is very powerful. In Jeremiah chapter 49, the Lord spoke about judge upon, judgment upon Elam. And the Lord was speaking about how he'll break the bow, the bow, the bow of Elam. Verse, Jeremiah 49, verse 35, 34, and 35. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I'll break it, and I'll bring the four winds from the four quarters of the heavens and scatter them by all these winds. We, 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 we forgot that God has supernatural power. I think we forgot. I think a lot of people forgot. In the church now, people have become so indoctrinated in a worldly sense, you know. What is California saying? What is the government of this nation saying? What is this saying? What is the WHO? Who? Yeah, you want to ask who are they really? The World Health Organization. Who? You know, who are they? And, and this and that and that and that and regulations from evil, satanic, demonic Jezebels in government as mayors and governors in states in America. You know what I mean? And government dictates and all that. And people get all wrapped up in that. And then the social norm of what's become about trying to follow this rule and that rule. Made by who? This is the rule book, my friends. This is the rule book. Cover my face from the other camera here. I'm showing it. Yeah, you can see it better. This is the rule book. Go down to uh, verse 39. Very powerful. I love this. I found this. Here it is. Oh, no, 38. I will set my throne in Elam. God said, I'll set up a throne there anyway. Before that, in the verse before that, he says, my fierce anger, in my fierce anger, I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. Have we forgotten that God has power over these evil entities? You know, like someone comes up with a new dictate, new ordinance, new thing, and all of a sudden you're like, well, they said, who, who are they? This is the they right here. This is the they, that, this is the, the drummer that we walk toward, march to his beat. Verse 39, Jeremiah 49, 39. Right toward the end of the book of Jeremiah. 49, 39, Jeremiah. But it shall come to pass in the, la in the latter days. Now that's now. So you think, well, that's just talking about Elam in the time of Jeremiah. Ha <laughs> ha. Here, here it is, my friend, right here. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the holy word of God. Hmm? It'll come to pass in the latter days. That's now. That wasn't then. You, think about it. Just use, use your mind for a minute. Use the brain God gave you. Got to use it once in a while. The time that Jeremiah is speaking here to them, that is not the same time as the latter days, obviously. It, it means not now, but later on, much later on, in the latter days. Not even like, 
a few years from now in Jeremiah's time. Not even in the time of Jesus, okay? The beginning of the A.D., the Anno Domini. 2,000 years ago, approximately now, right? 2,020 years ago, maybe, almost. Years ago. 2020. It'll come to pass in the latter days. The latter days is now. This is the latter times now. You know, there was a prophecy given, uh, an old prophecy given from decades ago by a mighty uh, general in the, in, the, in, the, in the move of the Spirit. I can't remember who it was now, but spoke that says something about in the, in the, in the year 2020, by the middle of the year, we'll start a new uh, dispensation of a revival. That was prophesied by somebody. Anyway, I'm just quoting that. Long time ago, not now. And he says, I will... It will come to pass in the latter days, watch this now, I will bring back the captives of Elam, says the Lord. The, so I want to close that there. And, and there's more. Declare among the nations, proclaim. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. The next chapter, Jeremiah 50, that's what I'm doing. But you know what it says here? I will bring back the captives. Thus saith the Lord. So you think like things have captivated people and messed them up. And God said before that, he said, I will destroy uh, kings and princes for my glory. So let, let's get that kind of spirit, uh, st that kind of vibration and power stirred up within us. I don't mean vibration just like, like it's shaking. I mean like the power of the Holy Ghost moving in us like a turbine engine, man, like a jet air engine, like a Rolls Royce jet engine. Get that thing turned on full blast and go 700 miles an hour. Pew! And let's move in victory. If you need healing, you need deliverance, you can have it. You need to be free from all this mess going on in the world, you can have it. The Word of God says you can have it. And our march is to the beat of the drummer, the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jehovah God and the Holy Ghost and what He's doing and saying. And we have the victory, my friend. We have the victory. I had to come and say this. So let's, let's get... And you know... In Africa, let's say in Africa, I mean, some places in other places too, but in Africa, you have all these people spouting and shouting and doing flips around like they, they're giving miracles out and people go running to that. But I want to ask a question, you bunch of people. Who's teaching about healing? Who's preaching the victory that someone could get it in their own house, in their own car, in their own office, in their own bed at night? I pray a lot at night. I lay down, I pray, and I just get quiet. Just, the world just shut off, and I'm just talking to God and communing with God. And I dream, and I things. I had great dreams this morning about very elegant, opulent things, and my book's coming out. I had an awesome prophetic dreams this morning uh, about that, and I'll maybe share about that at some point. But, but And the Lord, you know, and, and I get this feeling of the mind of God, the peace of God, the victory that we have. It's real and it's tangible. And we need to meditate on that. And we need to preach. People need to preach and teach about the victory, about deliverance, about healing, that you can have it. Not just to say, I'm the one that can give it to you, you needy little person. And, you know, come into my meeting and my whatever, my church or my, you know, whatever. And I'm going to pray for you. And then they have to do all this, all this rigmarole and song and dance with that. I'm telling you, we need, to, we need teachers in the body of Christ. Very few teachers, very few fathers. Even if there are some teachers, very few fathers. We need fathers. I've been talking about the blessing of a father. Well, this is a blessing from the father to tell you that we have the victory, and doctrinally speaking, we have it. All right? And uh, we need to teach people that they can have the victory, they can have the miracles that they want and need. And stop all this other stuff. And then people like in the seeker sensitive genre, just being like, uh, how can I say? Weak and unlearned, you know. And somebody was doing a thing, well, what if God doesn't move the mountain? That, whoever that pastor is, a preacher, evangelist is, needs to be, you know, scapegoated. You know the hook, you know the old hook they used to have? And when someone did bad, they were bombing, <laughs> flopping on the stage and they weren't good and everybody was like, oh, that's, you you're not entertaining us. And they have the shepherd's crook, they called it, I think. The, the old the thing with the hook. Well, that was a thing that, uh, a church thing originally. But there's a long stick with a hook on the end. And they'd actually reach out from the side of the curtain and grab the person and yank them off the stage. 
that needs to happen to some of these preachers. I'm telling you, they're just talking about, well, whatever, you never know, and and uh, blah blah. You know, you know, God, what if He doesn't do it? You know, what what three steps to staying, you know, happy uh, or, or or hopeful if you don't see the miracle? That, that kind of that's nonsense. That's not from the Bible. Jesus did the miracles. Remember John the Baptist? He uh, he um, saw saw you know. These these miracles happening, and and they had to send word back to him. Is this the one? And Jesus didn't say, "Oh, I am the one. Just believe me." He said, "No, tell them what you saw: the dead raised, the sick healed, the lame walked, the crippled walked, the possessed and demonized delivered. You saw signs, wonders, and miracles. That's proof of my of my messiahhood, my messiahship. That I am the one. That's the proof." So let's stop all this other stuff and get back to the original basics of the power of God. Talking to you like a good Holy Ghost warrior and spiritual father here. Stop all this other stuff and let's get on with the program. Let's get on with the program, folks, of miracles, signs and wonders. If you feel nervous about it, start to pray. Stretch your hands out. If you don't see it the first time, ask the Holy Spirit to give you more power, more anointing, more glory. Let it flow. Let the manifestations of the Spirit flow and operate through you. You know, pr prophecy. Some young... A guy wrote me, he says, I love you, Thomas Manton, you are such a great man of God. How I feel called to the prophetic. Who do you learn from? I said, I said, Jesus taught me how to do all this. Jesus gave me that. He commissioned me. It wasn't from man. But of course, we learn from people. But, you know, also by use and experience. Like if you want to build your muscles and get stronger at something. I was watching Arnold Schwarzenegger give a testimony. He said a couple of funny words. I didn't know if I should post it or not. He talked about the blessed assurance. He said that word a little, few too many times. I thought, ah, I don't know if I'm going to post this one, but I'm going to keep it in my archives or keep watching myself. Maybe I'll share it. It's worth for people to hear because he talked about, about work, you know, work, getting the thing done, building his muscles. He didn't become Mr. Olympia because he had just a dream or a thought about it. He worked toward that. We have to get on with the program, folks, and get busy working. You can build your spiritual muscles, so to speak, by law of use, by, uh, you know, working it, working miracles. That's why I call it the working of miracles. So anyway, I'll pick this up in another session. Let me go. But the Lord loves you, and the Lord wants to do miracles for you, and he wants to do miracles for you, but he wants to do miracles through you. And let's get on with it. And know this, these evil rulers that we saw here. God said, I will destroy them. And then I will take the captives out from the, the messes that they've done. You need to believe for that. We as societies in the body of Christ are in America, Europe, Africa, or Asia, wherever you find yourself. South America, all across the known world. And all the six inhabiting continents of the world. You need to understand that God is able to give you the victory and bring you out from all the mess that's going on. He's still God. Never forget it. I'll say this. I said, you know, some people have forgotten that he's God. He wants to prove himself and let, let people see that he's God. But he also wants to do it through you. And through me, he's doing it. So the Lord bless you. Love you much. I'll be sending out to my partners the e-books. Uh, as I've said, they are ready and they'll be coming out. We've just been so busy the last few days, but so much going on. Oh, my. The benefits of excellence are the laws of success. You can tell me which one you want. And the best book of all time is this one here, the Holy Bible, baby. Get into it and find your promise in here and work with it in Jesus' name. We have the victory. Never forget it. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you and I'm praying for you. And thank you for being my partner. The information on how you can sow and connect is on the uh, heading and in the comments. Share this with everybody. The Lord bless you. I'll see you again on the next broadcast. Love you much. Praying for you.